Hey, and on this episode of uh, Behind the Music, we're looking at Tiani Road, which is the last track on the uh, Cello Untamed SoundCloud playlist. So it's probably the one that gets played the least, uh, but I, I kind of wanted to talk about it today more behind, like, not necessarily like showing you how the track was built, although, you know, I'm going to show you that kind of stuff as well, but more like the the reason that I wrote it and I don't really write many personal songs like I'm not like a singer songwriter like in the traditional sense of the word but this was definitely written from a place uh you know of emotion like real emotion kind of thing so uh you know let, let's like dive into it and then I'll, I'll kind of show you like the reason I wrote it Th this was written way before uh, Cello Untamed and Violin Untamed was even written uh, but I was waiting to record these to then finish the track, if you know what I mean. So, like uh, we're gonna, like we do with all of these, play the track, have a listen to, you know, all of the the sounds. I'll point out some of the things uh, on the MIDI data, and then we'll get to it. It's quite a long one, so if you've already heard this track or you just want to skip to kind of like, you know, the the main part of the video, then I'll put a link on the screen uh, and in the description as well. So let's have a listen, and then we'll come back, and then uh, I'll start talking about how and why this track was made.
So that's it. It's a really simple uh, track. It's just one of those uh, building tracks that just kind of just keeps on evolving, keeps on changing ever so slightly and just keeps on uh, the energy, uh, you know, driving all the time. I'm quite a big fan of like electronic music, uh, kind of like Underworld and stuff where it just, it's forever just like building and building and building and building kind of thing. And you don't really notice that gradual change, but over the course of like, you know, five or six minutes, uh, that's what happens. So it, it kind of all started, okay, this is a long story. So it all started, I was directing uh, a documentary in China as part of a much bigger campaign, uh, like a, you know, like a, a film documentary. Uh, and I was in China and it was like the week before Christmas, we got called out to go to China uh, to do some filming. And I kind of looked at my wife and I was like, I've got to go to China the week before Christmas. And she was like, well, you've got to pay the bills, you know, you've got to do you know, what's right for the family and you've got to kind of like take on these things. And when I was in China, I was kind of getting, you know, quite homesick and sort of, you know, it was a great job. I really enjoyed myself. The team was amazing, all those kind of things. If you've ever been part of a, you know, film crew, you know, it was, was an amazing time. But there was this one point where we'd gone out to a bar, you know, I was desperate to find uh, just some kind of release from this film and, you know, like, let's go out and, you know, drink and find some local life. But then kind of about two, three o'clock in the morning, I found myself near my hotel with a couple of mates around me, uh, but feeling quite homesick. And I was on this square uh and I just heard out the my the, the, you know the corner of my eye heard out the corner of my eye hear, heard out the corner of my ear uh, just this vending machine, and it was just kind of like forever giving me this like you know this instruction, and I was like I don't really understand that. So I talked to one of the Chinese guys that we were with, and he was just like, it's it's telling you to pay the bill because you know you're 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 putting your order in, and it's saying you know like give me the give me the money sort of thing you know. And but it was forever going on. And at that point, I was like, I'm in China. I'm 1300 miles away from home, whatever it was. Feeling homesick. And then there was this, this machine, this Chinese machine just telling me to pay the bill, pay the bill, pay the bill. And it kind of then reminded me of what, uh, you know, my wife said is just like, you know, we've got to pay the bills. And this is the reason you're out here kind of thing. So that was like the whole reason the track was built. And like, so let's just play this audio recording uh, so you can hear what it was like live. I thoroughly recommend uh, doing this. This is just kind of like an iPhone, uh, obviously. Uh, you know, you can use something more sophisticated uh, to record your recordings on. But I often find like uh, an audio recording does more to jog my memory and more to kind of like, you know, make me think about a place than a picture sometimes does because for me it kind of puts me in that space more than a picture does. So the first recording I did, 19th of December 2018, was just that, it's just the street noise. Wasn't a lot. And then I heard this vending machine. So I just, I, I found that really interesting. I recorded it before I knew what it was uh, saying, but then, you know, let, talk to the, the guy that was with us and he was like, yeah, it just, it just means, you know, I need, you know, you've, you've, you've selected what you want to have from this machine. And it's just a pre-recorded person saying, pay the bill. But then it made me think of like what my wife said and like, you know, got me feeling, you know, quite homesick and like, I wanted to write this track. And the whole sort of like philosophy behind writing the track was like, uh, coming like uh, coming back home basically and the piano line is is basically that it is it's those four notes just played time and time again like you know that's all I want to do is come back home to the root note just like and and because the notes are going down it feels like you're coming back somewhere and that's it. So I just played those notes throughout the whole track. And I wrote that on the plane on the way back home. I was like, right, let's get this down. You know, didn't have a keyboard with me. It was just on my laptop, just like tippy tapping away. I re-recorded it afterwards once I got back and, you know, put a bit more human feeling into it. 
And then the cello, that's when, you know, I recorded the cello, we got that done. And I was like, right, this is the perfect time to do it. And the cello, I won't play it live on the keyboard, I'll just solo this and show you what it sounds like. And the whole idea behind this was just like, this is the root note, this E uh, flat down here. This is where the whole track is always coming back to. But with this cello, I felt like I could really like uh, delay how many times we come back to that. And some of these notes where it's just like, it never, it, you're expecting it to come back, but it's always pulling you back away from that place that we call home and that's where the, the philosophy of the track was is that just like you know I was miles and miles away from home but that's all I you know that's the only place that I wanted to be so that's the simple premise of this track and sometimes it can just be like an idea like that for me that uh, that sends off a track it doesn't you know when you're stuck in a in a rut and going oh, what do I do with this track I think sometimes the best thing to do is kind of go what's the story about what's the the, the big idea you know what is the the root human emotion that I'm trying to do as a composer here and for me it was just like you know I need to get back I need to get back home to see my family it's Christmas time but at the same time there's this woman uh, you know asking me to pay the bill uh, so <laughs> that's it as simple as that sounds that's it uh, so yeah that cello just builds over the whole, whole course uh, of the track uh, then there's this flat, uh, flatando patch at the end, which I am a big fan of. This wasn't played without any sort of like uh, ideas about uh, how it should be, be performed afterwards. So they're quite just like nice floaty notes that kind of like build up uh, as it gets towards the end of the track. There's just some basic MIDI drums. Uh, I am not the best drum programmer in the world, but these are just kind of like, a, uh, they're just basically Logic's built-in uh, drums. One of their drum kits. I think they're all right, actually. I think they're, they're quite passable. If you haven't got, I would love to re-record this with real drums if, if, if ever I got the chance. Uh, but for the time being, MIDI drums are absolutely fine. Uh, and then there's this, uh, which I think is one of Logic's sort of like secret, uh, secret little things really. If you go into uh, Alchemy, now this plugin used to be like a lot of money and then Logic bought it, Apple bought it and then included it with this. And I think f for my taste anyway, a lot of these are really like sci-fi and too like electronic and too, I don't know, too like synthy for want of a better word. But there are a few that I really like. And one of these is this, uh, I think it's called Ether Choir, uh, which is just like, a really nice sound. It kind of complements our libraries quite well in that it's like, it's simple, but it's like forever changing and just slowly moving all the time. I played around with the, the default preset. I find a lot of these presets are, they're okay. They're sort of like the majority of the way there. And then if you just do some, uh, you know, some, changing around with the controls you can get them into a much nicer space than they already are or not a much nicer space but like a place that's better for your track so that note just you know carries on throughout the whole track and that is just like the underscore for the for the whole thing uh, and then there's the sample at the beginning I was I was contemplating using this sample throughout the track but I thought well, no, this is the sample that kind of spurred off the track. So let's just leave it at the beginning and then leave the rest of the track to just be what it is. So there's, I, I did quite a lot of processing on this. I recorded it on my iPhone, so it sounds, you know, it doesn't sound amazing in the first place. Uh, but what I then did was add uh, like quite a lot of heavy EQing. So there's just this like, you know, middle scoop, kind of like to make it sound more like a telephone uh, than anything else. Then there's this tape delay. 
Uh, it's just one of the the, the uh, presets in Logic. There's nothing uh, crazy about that. That's just kind of uh, standard. Then one of the built-in uh, distortion plugins again. I often find like Logic plugins are absolutely really powerful, and they to to open them up they look simple and they look like oh that's that's not going to be great. But actually, if you listen to them as a sound, especially for doing just simple stuff like this that doesn't necessarily have to sound that musical, I think they're they're really good. So that's the the plugin uh, 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 plugin chain for for the sample. So I'll just play that on its own. And then everything, as it always does, just goes through Concert Hall Vienna with uh, Fab Filters Pro R uh, plugin, and that went, you know, through it as well. I think the drums, yeah, every single thing uh, on this track except the uh, Ether Choir or Ether Choir, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, is going through that. So, like, that's it. I like, you know, like I said uh, before, this track was really, really simple, but it's one of those tracks that, that actually came from somewhere. You weren't making up emotions or you weren't, you know, I wasn't making up, oh, I want this track to sound, you know, epic and angry because I'm epic and angry. You know, it was built from, from a genuine place of emotion. And it was built from just, you know, me at three o'clock in the morning in the middle of China, you know, uh, you know, with a few too many beers and me going, I kind of, you know, it's the week before Christmas, I miss home and I'm listening to this vending machine telling me to pay the bills. At least I hope that's what it says. You know, the, the guide that was with us, the uh, Chinese guy that was with us could have been telling me a big fat lie and it, you know, it means something totally different. But, uh, you know, that's where the, the, the essence of the track came from is just this one sample. I thoroughly recommend you do that way more than you do if you don't do it enough. You just grab your iPhone and just record your environment around you. And if there's you know, interesting sounds that you like to listen to or just just sit and, and listen, you know, to your environment around you. You don't have to record it with the world's best microphones and recording gear. An iPhone is simply good enough. Uh, so that's it. Like I do, there's not too much detail about, you know, the instruments that I've used and those kind of things. So if you do want to know that, just drop me a comment and I'll, I'll, I'll respond to you in the uh, comment section, but it was more like, where does this track come from? Uh, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. Like, you know, it's a bit of a left field move for me to actually open up and go, you know, this is, this is what I was feeling and this is how I was, you know, thinking as a human being. Uh, but you know, hopefully you've, hopefully you found it useful. Uh, so as, as always, uh, if you like what we've uh, done, like hit the like button uh, and subscribe uh, uh, to our YouTube channel to keep up to date with, you know, loads more videos like this coming. Uh, so that's it. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Take care.